pesta. Oke, okay, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to visiting lecture today. We would like thank you for Dr. Suraya Ibrahim for the coming for this event today. Oke, okay, let me welcome our presenter Dr. Suraya Ibrahim as a research fellow center of excellence for social innovation and sustainability as for the topic today is management accounting from University Malaysia Perlis for today's session is being live streamed on Universitas Tekom YouTube channel and first I will read our agenda this afternoon first we will start class presentation by Dr. Suraya and continue with Q&A session and the next session is time for picture for documentation and last time is closing so we will start for the class today for Dr. Suraya you can start for this presentation today thank you Okay, uh, good day to all of you. Uh, today I've been, um, I will be presenting my uh, introduction of managerial accounting as an overview and general. Uh, thank you, Miss Nawita. Okay, see you again. So may I know this? Um, so we have a management class student. Okay, is it uh, from the degree accounting background or business management or what? May I know? Uh, we have uh, two class. Uh, first is a business, uh, business class and also management uh -huh. class. Okay, okay. So let me... Uh, right. Uh, for all of them as a general overview of uh, managerial accounting as they are not an accounting student and benefit all of you. Okay, so uh, first of all, may I introduce myself, uh, Dr. Suraya Ibrahim uh, from uh, Research Fellow of uh, Center of Excellence, uh, Social Innovations and Sustainability and my uh, major or niche area in management accounting. Okay, so what we want to look um, here, do you see my slide, everyone? Okay. Or I have to make it a slideshow like this. Okay, can you get my slide, everyone? Can I get respond? Okay, if uh, you have my slide, okay. So I will continue okay, to the learning objective. Well, first of all, we have to understand that this uh, managerial accounting, okay, managerial accounting play a vital role to the environment, okay, to the organization and also all the stakeholders behind or among, uh, around the company, okay? It doesn't matter whether it's a big company, it's SME, it's a private company, and so on. So they have, uh, uh, the managerial accounting have a very major role in especially to making decisions, to planning, to controlling, and so on. Okay, so this is the learning objective Today, okay, so I would define what is managerial accounting, okay, explain the rules of managerial accounting, okay, that to compare uh, between management accounting and also financial accounting, all right? So number four, to describe manager managerial accounting tools and techniques, okay, we provide a basically uh, um, an understanding of few tools that is popular in managerial accounting that maybe is well become interesting because um, especially in manufacturing industries, okay, it doesn't matter. It's also covers from uh, services uh, and product companies for these accounting tools and techniques that various or popular 
majority of companies that are using it. Okay. So in terms of managerial accounting also, we have issues, contemporary issues that I will add a bit. Okay. In this session. All right. So, so we will cover all of those five uh, categories of learning objective uh, today. Okay. So first of all, when we call the my slide move, Novita, my slide move or not? Yes. Ah, okay, good. Okay. So actually, managerial accounting here is defined as a process of first identifying, okay, identifying, collecting, right? Number two, number three, measuring classifying and reporting the financial and also non-financial information by organization, which means is the management team helps the in planning, controlling, and also decision-making that they have to make uh, all over the years, okay? So here, when we're defining this uh, managerial accounting, um we have to look into three categories, okay? So these categories include planning, controlling, and also uh, decision making, right? Okay, so include to have uh, a particular bookkeeping, okay, in financial accounting to support this managerial accounting concept, okay? So from this uh, point of view, Okay, all right, it's embedded, okay, it's embedded with identifying, okay, collecting and measuring and also classif classifying before it comes to the reporting to identify what? To identify the transaction, to identify the day-to-day -day transaction in business, okay, in terms of, uh, for example, buying raw material, Okay, for example, payment to the uh, officer or managers or club or account clubs or factory uh, rental, for example. So we have to identify and collect all those things before we calculate, before we make our planning and controlling and finally to have a good decision making by all the managers involved. Okay, so this process of collecting, measuring, classifying, and also reporting is a pivotal role in managerial accounting where all the managers, all the department, okay, include, okay, not only accounting department, inclusive of operation department, marketing, okay, for example, include of finance department, include of sales department, maybe, okay, it depends on the company that how many departments they have, they have to collaborate with management accounting, okay? So if you believe you can um, uh, maybe study a process of management accounting, study a bit of cases in management accounting that um, include, all these key elements that the managers and all should has uh, uh, should uh, been as a consideration okay so the main point of having this uh, management accounting they have the manager have to plan okay have to plan have to control for example what to control control the resources control the budget okay control uh, in terms of uh, skilled workers, okay, non-skilled workers, right? So basically, after they have all key elements, okay, they have to plan. They can uh, make a plan enough, okay? And then they have to also see the controlling basis. It comes where, okay, this planning, classifying, measuring, collecting, Thing and identifying has been done. Okay, so after that, finally, they have to make a decision, a good decision, a wise decision. Okay, that is the importance or benefit that having this key um, management accounting processes before we come to the uh, key main key elements, which is planning, controlling, and decision making. 
Okay, I hope you can get me. Um, okay, inside of uh, management accounting. Okay, uh, they have also um, uh, like uh, we can say that um, it's a system. Okay, that are structured to measure and assign all costs. Okay, all costs, okay, include raw materials, labor costs, okay, overhead costs, right? This is the prime cost that we can uh, organize in management accounting perspective, okay? Okay. The first one. Okay, this uh, basic concept of planning, okay, actually is a process to set the goals or objective in the organization where the manager should identify which character, which method, okay, that, uh, that they want to achieve, that they want to commit, okay. So in this particular uh, terms, okay, so include the managers must uh, set, okay, some objective, okay, it doesn't matter departmental objective or as the general objective for the organization okay so here um they have to really identify what to achieve how and who should achieve all this uh, planning so a proper planning okay can contribute to a good decision making can contribute to the good result okay to contribute to the good management, team management as uh, within the managerial accounting perspective, okay? So other than that, um, okay, so other than that, uh, in building, okay, some, for example, the planning of skilled and unskilled workers. This is just an example. If you look, okay, the production, for example, we take manufacturing companies, okay? So they want to plan something for their skilled and unskilled workers with a reasonable budget, for example, okay? Where do they can get these workers from? Okay, example, okay? So maybe from... Uh, which region, maybe from outside the country, for example, we need that uh, Bangladesh or we need that Nepal, okay, for those uh, working, okay, in the manufacturing sector. It doesn't matter how skilled and unskilled, but they have to differentiate, okay, they have to plan over the year, for example, yearly planning, okay, quarter planning, quarter year planning, and also next future, Yes, planning. Okay, so in planning, normally they have to be very uh, particular because from the past, okay, for example, from the past experience, okay, this planning can be uh, uh, can be write up or can be focused, okay, based on the experience of previous years achievement. Okay, so somehow this is. Um, like uh, uh, the uh, accountant, uh, management accountant, okay, or operation management manager, operation managers, for example, they have a lot of experience to share with the management accountant in uh, getting this planning wiser, okay? So here, when we look at this uh, planning in the business environment has become, okay, increasingly volatile because of, uh, unpredictable okay unpredictable uh, business management that correspondingly more complex uh, in particular for example increased competition has become a threat in the survival of the business itself so here planning play an important role in uh, in that in the business environment especially strategic planning with a view to achieve organizational efficiency, okay, uh, to enhance their product, to make more sales, okay. So in order to manage the business to achieve 
or align with their organizational goals, okay? So this efficiency, the organization can taste, okay? Um, management style and also management control system in a um, perspective of management accounting, okay, to, uh, to be structured, to be structured, okay, in a good way, okay, in a suitable way, depending on their business entity, depending on their uh, features of uh, business, okay. So here, particularly, okay, when we relate to the management accounting, we show that the control system is an important mechanism that we should have together, and it's become a, a mechanism that we can consider as responsible for the design and implementation of strategic, uh, strategies or strategic planning. That uh, in terms, okay, in terms of we look at the reliability the provision of managerial information that they get and fits the planning and control process processes that become uh, critical nowadays. Okay. All right. So this is a controlling part where this involved between uh, comparing, okay, uh, comparing uh, the actual performance, the budgeted performance, Okay, from previous years. So as I said in planning, we do have to support with control matters where this controlling basis has to be in the organization. Because why? Management must make a decision about the best course of action, for example, in achieving their performance. Okay, so here, when we said uh, controlling, okay, um control uh in management accounting it's quite um different okay uh if we compare in the principle of management part all right so this controlling activities okay if we relate to that uh, uh planning okay just now we do have some sort of um um interlinkages between that uh, also, okay? So this uh, controlling also can be as a monitor, monitoring activities because in measuring and correcting the actual results to make sure that the goals and plans of a business are achieved. So this control of, we can say, control and performance report, for example, will be provided by management accountant that relate uh, to their uh, link to their actual and expected performances of a business. Okay, what performances of the business? Okay, so we can relate to the profit as well. We can relate to the uh, sales as, uh, as well. Does the sales item or the sales product that they provided achieving their target or what, uh, for example, what is actual, okay? What are the actual sales um, uh, come out in that year or next year? So this um, control in management accounting should be uh, a serious way, okay? A serious way of thinking in management accounting perspective, right? So if you, uh, if, for example, if you uh, see, okay, if you understand what the manager accountant um, involved, okay, so major major contributor from this manager accountant should be in a control process, including exploration of alternative. Okay, so what alternative? So here, maybe they have new alternative to. Uh, to make a suggestion, okay, to make a suggestion to the CEO of organization. So that is how this controlling and planning happen in an organization. Okay, so exploration of alternative for corrective action, corrective strategies, they can suggest to the organization, suggest to the CEO um, how to uh, overcome of any discrepancies that happen during the actual and uh, budgeted one, okay? So the functions of um, 
controlling in uh, achieving uh, performances and also organizational um, objective. Uh, um, uh, I think it's um, very important okay, that all the managers can uh, look around because here planning and control often known as production planning and control and uh, it's become a management functions that seek to determine first what market demands are stating and second reconcile how a company can fill those demands through this planning and control so that is why when we want to learn wanted to learn this management accounting we have to understand okay the key elements the the perspective okay key element perspective in management accounting first right okay so what's different here between planning and control there's a, a bit of different here which planning involved in developing objective okay and preparing various budgets to achieve those objective okay what's control needs to be uh, defined or, or it's different between this uh, planning part okay so this control involves the steps taken to the management to increase the likelihood that the objective set down has been set down while planning attain and that all parts of the organization that are worse together towards that goal. Okay, so that is why sometimes we have uh, such uh, differences that involving this planning, which is involved establishing goals and communicating. Okay, communicate, yeah? communicate this goal to employees of the organization. Who's the employees? These employees covers from managers, clerk, okay, admin, assistant, okay, operation manager, for example, because they have to have the actual, okay, the actual data or the actual information, for example, at the factory, after every department, so, okay, to report to the CEOs, general managers, and so on. So planning involves establishing goals and communicating these goals to employees of the organization, again, and the control function assesses whether these goals were achieved or not. And it's often used to evaluate the performance of employees, uh, department, and the organization as a whole. But to zoom to the management accounting, they can um, see to evaluate the resources that has been used, the labor that has been used, and also the overhead, okay, overhead costs that involve such, for example, is a factory rental, okay, factory rental, and uh, electricity bills, and so on, okay, they have to have that. Uh, planning and control over the years to make sure they can what they can improve their profit yearly in a yearly basis okay that is because planning and control is the most important thing that we should have been highlight in this manager accounting perspective first okay okay so then the third elements, okay, third elements, okay. Okay, so this third element involves decision making, okay, decision making in managerial accounting. Okay, what need to be uh, considered all inclusive of this uh, uh, decision making, okay, decision making. So this decision making, okay, actually providing the financial insights and also non-financial insights, okay, for the purpose of to make a good decisional, okay, uh, decisional um, in maybe in uh, monthly meeting, in quarterly meeting of their organization, okay. What I can say for this decision making, the management accountant can use financial data and also non-financial data Plus, the analysis to provide insights and recommendations for strategic, we can call it strategic decision-making as well. Okay, for example, they can 
analyze what that has been presented by management accountant. Uh, for example, the financial impact of different, we look into, let's say, pricing strategies for one product, correct? So these pricing strategies, the production methods, okay, remember that I said managerial accounting, they have to cover several, okay, several, uh, um, I mean, several things, okay, like pricing strategies, labor strategies, raw materials budget, and so on. Okay, production methods and include of any investment that has been planned uh, by the companies. Okay, can you get me, everyone? I hope so. <laughs> okay, so include in, the, the, in this decision making. So we do have... Uh, also some processes, okay, some processes like um, we can call it as uh, to provide the investors, for example, with a baseline of analysis, okay, what baseline of analysis, uh, uh, why, why we need this uh, baseline of analysis, because we can provide the data for comparison, okay, between a financial health of uh for example of the companies okay so that if the financial health financial standing of the company is very good okay the company can attract the investors easily as well as to contribute a huge amount of investment to that company okay so also Okay, among stakeholders, among stakeholders, okay, so beside the shareholders that wanted to invest to the companies, right? So the um it helps also for those creditors. Creditors include bank, okay, include bank that can assess the solvency. What solvency means, okay? Solvency, the financial standing, okay, and uh, liquidity and credit worthiness. Okay, of the business because why somehow the business want to make a long term loan from the bank to secure the uh, secure the agreement credit agreement from the creditors. So this ma uh, management accounting aspect also can provide them uh, uh, data. Okay, uh, wise data. Okay, for them to analyze and making decision in their part and also collaborate with companies uh, team okay so that is why these three elements okay first planning controlling and decision making is the most important highlight of management accounting as general okay before we explore more we have to understand these three concepts here yeah? Okay, these three concepts, planning, controlling, and also decision-making. Okay? Are you okay? Are all of you okay? I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> right? So, all right. This is a comparison that maybe can help you to differentiate, all right? Differentiate between financial accounting and uh, managerial accounting, okay? So differences, okay? So purpose, first we look at the purpose, okay? For financial accounting to record, okay? To summarize and report business transaction as well. While in managerial accounting, they have to plan, control, and assist in decision-making, okay? Helps the uh, general manager, or CEOs in deciding something, okay? So types of information that different from financial accounting and also manager accounting, if you look at this, in financial accounting, they provide financial, financial matters, okay? Providing to uh, produce a financial report as well. Okay, however, in managerial accounting also include the financial part, but they have to have non-financial non-financial part and also the planning of 
subjective in nature in future. Okay, very subjective. Okay, like to uh, choose uh, to uh, the subsidiary, uh, sorry, to choose the uh, outside, okay, companies as a collaborator or to make a decision on to open up a subsidiaries outside the countries, for example, that is non-financial matter that involving in management accounting um, so far, right? Okay, so how about the time and also orientation? Okay, so time and orientation here, if you look based on financial accounting, they based on historical data. Okay, for example, how these historical data uh, were made in day-to-day -day operation? For example, today, 2nd of uh, February 2024, they uh, pay salary to all managers in companies okay so to record this okay they have to record after okay they are providing all the document in okay so manager accounting they more to the forward looking information what is forward looking information okay this forward looking information include right uh, to Make a plan, the future plan, okay, next year, five year planning, okay, of what? Of product, of materials that involve in product, for example, on services uh, as well, and also on labor, on overhead, okay, on so many things, okay. That's why when we look type of information that provided by managerial accountant, we can say that it can be subjective in nature, right? So, for managerial accounting, okay? So, before that, uh, Lovita, so my time until 2 to 4, right? 2 hours? Is it 2 hours? Okay. Yes. Okay, okay. Thank you, Lovita. No problem. Right? So, okay, let's look on the uses, okay, uses of the financial accounting and managerial accounting. Okay, so as far as we are concerned, okay, about the financial accounting, this is, um, uh, I mean, it's a use, okay, it's uh, external uses such as shareholders, creditors, regulators, investors, and government maybe, okay. So this financial accounting, they have to, prov to provide, okay, the financial standing, okay, from, uh, from uh, to the, uh, I mean, to the, uh, uh, these stakeholders, okay, various stakeholders providing financial reporting, such as statement of comprehensive income, Statement of financial position, cash flows, and all in annual report. If you can see, you can browse or look at the annual report. That is the purpose of financial accounting, okay, to provide okay, financial report to the stakeholders, not only shareholders, but to the stakeholders. Okay, that is the main uses of financial accounting that we can uh, quote as external users, right? Okay, so while in this managerial accounting, we have to provide, okay, our management accountant have to provide uh, information to the internal users, okay? Who is, who are the inter, internal users, okay? So here, the internal users include their managers, okay, their CEO, their uh, board of directors, and so on. Because why? That's why we do have that, again, planning, controlling, okay, controlling by who? Inside managers, okay, to the directors, okay, for something that they have to, okay. So here, that is different. One, financial accounting for external users. Manager accounting is for internal users because they financial and non-financial information 
provided to them, okay, for for uh for controlling and also in ass assisting, we can say that in assisting the managers in decision making to decide or to make a corrective action of any possible outcome that they face, right? Okay, I hope you can get me. Okay, so how about the preparations of reports? The standard and regulations that they uh, implemented or apply or they follow, okay? So for financial accounting, okay, I am certain that all of you understand, okay, about the requirement by law subject to requirements such as GAAP, General Accepted Accounting Principles, and IFRS, okay, International Financial Reporting Standard, IFRS, to, that they all, um, most of the countries has been using, okay, for uh, American, they based on GAAP. Okay, so in managerial accounting, they have one, uh, they have uh, optional. Okay, they don't have any uh, standard or regulations that they have to follow. Okay, but it will be based on the accounting standard set up by their government. Okay, uh, they, they have to follow, but it is more in a creative way of doing in managerial accounting that is why we have we can say it's a subjective in nature. Okay, it depends on the industries that they are involved. If manufacturing will be different with a line, okay, services companies, and also for those doing um, uh, other services and or even they have a uh, product, okay, different product based. So it depends on the nature of the company itself. They can create depending on the nature of the business. Okay, so here, what examples of the report? Okay, so here, example of the reports that involve, okay, for financial accounting, okay, the main reports that um, I think it's compulsory for them to follow for reporting purposes, okay, financial statement um, and compre uh, like a statement of comprehensive income and statement of financial position. And also we do have cash flow statement that they have to provide to all stakeholders in their yearly report, which referring to uh, annual report. Okay, so in managerial accounting here, for example, they have a report by internally used report, for example, sales budget, production budget, production planning, okay, overhead analysis report, for example. Okay, so it's a quite different, okay, much different between uh, financial accounting and managerial accounting in terms of uh, reporting or in terms of reports, right? Okay. Right, so it, when it comes into uh, cost element, okay, some of managerial accounting techniques and tools, okay, um, include, of course, elements, okay. So this cost element, okay, basically involving, okay, uh, product costs such as labor cost, direct material cost, overhead cost, right, Two common costing system that are used in organization, which is referring to the process costing and job costing. So here, when we, um, when uh, people ask about, uh, what are the elements of cost? What are the elements of cost in managerial accounting? Here we have to highlight that materials, okay, labor and overhead cost. That three, okay, that three, okay. So these material costs are the expenses on raw materials and labor costs, okay, involving wages and salaries that the company pay uh, to the, uh, whether workers, part-time workers, full-time workers, employees, and so on. Okay, so overhead costs that cover indirect expenses. Okay, indirect expenses like rental, okay, factory rental, okay, uh, like uh, utilities, okay, electricity, water bills, okay, uh, internet bills and so on, okay, that is uh, overhead cost that faced or include in their uh, 
in in their in their calculation as well right there is the cost element that uh, they need to uh, have normally they need to okay so um okay so there is i think cost element okay um other than that okay you have to remember that these elements are very fundamental very fundamental it must involve all those trees okay and uh, for the purpose of accuracy of costing method okay accuracy of costing and also to support the pricing decision okay to support the pricing decisions as well and also it um uh, always used by the financial analysis over the business operation. Okay, so for example, if we look into manufacturing firm that produce designer lamps, for example, lamps, okay, so that material cost involved with, for example, glass. Okay, they need glass, they need metal, and also bulbs. So how about the labor cost involved? This, for example, um, salaries or wages of the artisan? and assembly line workers, unskilled and non-skilled workers as well. And plus overhead costs that cover, for example, factory rent, utilities, machinery. Okay, don't forget they have machinery, maintenance services and so on. So by understanding this cost can help us in uh, pricing the lamp, for example, competitively and budgeting for the upcoming production cycles and evaluate. Uh, the operational efficiency and it's also enable the strategic decision okay it's enable the strategic decision that we collaborate to the uh, main elements of managerial accounting and they can expand uh, expand into new markets or investment in more efficient production equipment okay for example they want to buy very technological machinery Okay, they have to collaborate with the costing and also budget also. Okay, that is how these cost elements, okay, taking over or control or um, all of uh, the insightful of managerial accounting perspective. Okay, so including workforce, right? Understanding this element uh, very important because uh, to help the managerial accountant and also their team, okay, in assisting a precise costing, accuracy, okay, budgeting and also financial uh, analysis, which are crucial for effective decision making. That back to the number three elements, okay, character of management accounting, decision making that we have to, actually, we have to um, interlink, okay, how they uh, work around. Okay, with all those elements. Okay, so here, uh, to better a cost control, of course, to better a cost control and pricing strategies, and okay, uh, most thing okay to ensure the organizational financial sustainability. Because why, if the managers can minimize their cost, okay, and enhance the performance, okay. Uh, selling product or services in a um, uh, large profit margin so they can um, they can get more profit and it's ensure that their sustainability in so many things that they involve in okay so another example okay also involved with a direct indirect materials that include uh, cleaning, for example, supplies, okay, lubricants for machines and so on, right? So what then to have um, process costing, process uh, costing here. Okay, so process costing in management accounting is a methodology we uh, consider as a methodology that traces and accumulates the direct cost okay what's direct cost and allocates their indirect cost of a manual 
manufacturing process that costs are assigned to product. Um, okay. Um, which might include an entire month of production. So, means that process costing is one type of operation which used to ascertain the cost of a product at each process or stage of manufacture. Alright, so here, if we uh, refer to the uh, Certified International Management Accountant, they defines process costing as the costing method that applicable Okay, where goods or services result from a sequence of continuous or repetitive operations or processes. Okay, they have few steps. Okay, but I'm not going to uh, explain in that step because it's very uh, detailed and uh, very, um, I think, uh, so many things that I think we just uh, go for general only uh, today. Okay, for the purpose of today's lesson. Okay, so beside that, what do you think that these budgeting processes also uh, the most crucial part, okay, um, in managerial accounting? Okay, so here, when we're talking about uh, budgeting, okay, when we're talking about uh, budgeting, of course, we can... Um, we make sure that this uh, technique uh, become uh, one of among the powerful technique then uh, that widely used okay for that planning uh, executing and evaluating the organizational operations okay why this budget become so uh, uh, critical because this budget is a detail of financial plans, okay, financial plan for future time period of the company. For next year, not for only next year, for two years in the future, for the five years. Normally, they will plan for five years uh, budget, okay? So, because here, budgets typically consider or be prepared before the budgeted period begins, okay? So, that is how we connect with the past data or experience that um, uh, from uh, from the previous years, okay, to be included, to be uh, considered in making this budget, okay, in ma making this budget. So, because for this re reason, okay, budgeted amount are estimated and not actual amount. Uh, that's why if you uh, notice, I said, uh, I shared with you before, okay, they have actual budget and also budgeted one. Budgeted amounts will be different with the actual budget. Okay, the budgeted one is planning before it comes to the actual one, right? So here, budgeting is a financial plan that the manager or accountant must consider because this process of allocating Finite resources, all right? For example, to the prioritized need of an organization. What has the uh, what has to be priority? Okay, which one? So in most cases, okay, for a governmental entity, for example, the budget represents the legal authority to spend money. Okay, so in Malaysia, for example, I'm not sure in Indonesia, they will uh, the prime minister will present the budget. Uh, in October every year, normally in October, okay? So that is how to relate that budgeting process is very uh, crucial and important um, in management, okay? In management and also management accounting and they have also to, to uh, evaluate a management manager's performance as well as the company's managers that are responsible to provide, uh, to collaborate with the performance, okay? All right, so after that, we have also, okay, if you uh, notice, okay, this cost volume profit analysis, okay? So I think we have also learned, okay, in economics basic for CVP analysis. However, the CVP analysis today is more to uh the management accounting perspective okay 
CVP in management accounting. Okay. So here, CVP analysis also can be estimated how. Okay, how changes in cost, sales, and price that will later affect the company's profit. Okay, so this break-even point, for example, is calculated in the analysis, okay, to make sure that the minimum unit of the organization needs to be produced to gain profit. Okay, what's the function? What the purpose to have the CVP analysis in management, accounting, okay, so if you can collaborate because we want to know, okay, we, the manager want to know, want to estimate, okay, um, how much, okay, how many, okay, break even they have to have, okay, in order to achieve their targeted profit. So it's a way to find out how changes in variable and fixed cost, okay. Remember that in cost accounting, we do have cost like a raw material, labor, and also overhead cost. And this fixed cost affect a firm's profit. Okay, so here companies can use also a CVP analysis and to see how many they need to sell. Okay, how many? Okay, how many they need to sell in order to get the break even at least to cover all costs that they have been spending over. Okay, so here um, companies can use that CVP as a general okay, information about the break-even point uh, because they need to focus, uh, they need to plan on their minimum, minimum profit margin. Okay, minimum profit margin. Okay, so the CVP analysis also okay, known as break-even analysis can consider as, as a financial tool that leaders use when determining short-term strategies for their business. Okay? Only short-term strategies they can use as a general um, um, estimate, as uh, estimal, um, estimate uh, strategies. Okay, so this that can uh, also can convey to business decision makers the effect of changes in, for example, selling price, Okay, on their cost and volume on profits in short term, and also maybe it can contribute to the information that they have planned for long term. Okay, so CVP um also used okay um uh, importantly in uh, manager accounting uh in order to making a decision. Okay, so back to relate with the decisional making process because uh, at least they can give the company an uh, overview, understanding of how its cost affect its profit. How its cost affect its profit. Okay, so this CVP can give also insight into what the company's price should be and if it needs to cut costs, for example, to stay within a reason, reasonable price range for the market, okay, besides to have a very uh, reasonable profit margin uh, for, for that year, for example. Okay, so that is why CVP include one of the, uh, in, uh, one of the important techniques uh, in manage, management accounting that we, okay, adapted from uh, CVP analysis from economic okay, perspective as well, right? Okay then, okay then, uh, after that, we also can also, we also can look into benchmarking. What's benchmarking? Um, why it needs for, uh, uh, for the company? What's the ben benefit of benchmarking? to uh, the companies, okay? So this benchmarking, okay, identified as a process of uh, comparing, uh, basically comparing uh, business processes and performances to other companies, okay? So you, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that you 
always heard that they say, okay, so apple cannot compare to lemon or orange. Okay, so if you want to compare, you can compare apple to apple. Means that you take if services company, you compare to the services company. If you're doing product, for example, table, you compare to other rival of producing also table. So that is benchmarking process happen and uh, become a reliable information for you in comparing and make a decision. Okay, before make this decision, maybe it comes into planning, controlling and also to make a decision wisely. That's why for the businesses, we have to compare in terms of to relate with benchmarking. We have to benchmark, okay, with the same industry. If you education industry, we have to compare with education industry, maybe in overseas, okay, for example, or if you are providing, okay, providing uh, food services, you have to choose a similar kind of food of services, for example, uh, providing fried chicken, you have to compare with the fried chicken companies, other fried chicken companies that maybe you can adopt, okay, to the business processes uh, and uh, that similar, okay, quite similar from yours. Okay, so why we need this uh, benchmarking actually, okay, why we need this benchmarking to improve, okay, operational efficiency through the refinement of processes, not only the product, the processes of the product and procedures, okay, that has been used, that has been implemented by the company. Maybe, for example, the procedures of taking um, outside workers, okay, so the company can focus, okay, only the process of uh, taking the uh, outside workers, okay, from the other companies. How do they give, uh, uh, how do they set their wages, for example? How do they set their time of working? How do they differentiate, okay, differentiating procedures of uh, uh, wages and also uh, how do they uh, treat, okay, in terms of working hours of unskilled and procedures of working hours for unskilled and skilled labor, for example, okay, it doesn't matter, okay, how they benchmark to improve, okay, how to, uh, to improve their uh, processes and procedures in every, okay, in every uh, part. Okay, of their company, maybe on uh, on the workers side, outside workers, unskilled and uh, skilled labor, maybe on the how they uh, have a consignment uh, about the raw materials that they want to uh, get from their creditors. Okay, the consignment procedures, for example, it it maybe can improve through this benchmarking of other companies. Okay. So it doesn't matter, okay, that part, we have to choose whether the same industries or not on that uh, particular uh, area. So evaluate the efficiency of previous performance, of course, and understand how the competitors, their competitors and so rival to operate, to ident identify which best practices for increasing the performance of employees, okay, for example. And they have many benefits that uh, come out from uh, benchmarking, okay, from that techniques that has been uh, used worldwide. And they have a se seven, uh, I think several uh, benefits for benchmarking processes to be um, include, to increase the efficiency, set a clear business goal, provide new opportunities, business opportunities, okay, to have a um, good idea of, for example, marketing part to, uh, to sell the product, to market their services, right? So there are so much uh, advantages that we have 
through benchmarking. Okay, so another thing to increase customer satisfaction, okay, productivity, the quality of product, market performance, and also to make it uh, competitive to uh, the industry. Okay, so however, they have also a few disadvantages such as cost of benchmarking sometimes could be high. And the potential for sharing valuable information with competitors. Okay, so sometimes the uh, private and confidential, they have to that. Okay, that is how benchmarking provide um, or support the management accounting in terms of uh, increasing their uh, performances. Okay. Right, so, so far, are you okay? All right, so another thing to have in is uh, decision-making techniques, okay? Decision-making techniques. Okay, so here, the process of analyze and choosing the best alternative. Okay, which is the best alternative among alternative that has been presented, okay, in a management meeting, for example. Okay, for example, whether to buy or outsource, to buy part of the product or to outsource, which one is more efficient, which one is quality one, which one is minimized cost and effective. Okay, doing and so on. So here, decision making techniques, which include um some rational decision making model. Maybe you can have a SWOT analysis. Okay, is include to that decision making techniques, and uh we also have so far uh benefit analysis, cost and benefit analysis. So pros and cons. That is general one and decision matrix. And also, it can come from brainstorming among okay, the leader of all department in uh, an organization. Okay, then because this method actually to help the so individuals and teams, right, to evaluate options, right, and weigh the pros and cons to differentiate between the good and the bad. And to make well informed choices, you can say that to make well informed choices. Okay, that is decision making technique that maybe can uh, support. Okay, this uh, management accounting uh, process procedures and so on. Okay, so of course in having this decision making technique, they have few steps that needs to follow and also suggested by the. Uh, specialist in decision making, okay, for example, to identify the decision first, okay, then gather the information to identify the alternative solution that they have, right, okay, it depends on the available information that they have, okay, weigh the evidence, okay, the evidences should be weak. okay, choose among the best alternative and take actions and also they have to review and uh, for those impact both impact info uh, the good and the bad that i've been uh, mentioned earlier okay so this decision making should be a very uh, helpful techniques okay uh, okay they have uh, sometimes they have also a uh, techniques that provided by a uh, specialist for example defi technique cost effective analysis, and so on, okay? Right. Okay, so here, when we're talking about the management accounting, also, uh, also involving uh, contemporary issues, Okay, especially in pertaining to manager manager accounting tools and techniques. Okay, uh, which one to choose? Which which one to adopt? Because different 
fitness will will not be the same. Okay, we will be not in just in uh label in terms of do a bit. Right, and I don't think that these and tools that used okay by a manufacturing industries. All right, uh, it becomes sometimes as a common to, of course. To see the benefits of uh, that techniques, okay. For example, we do have treatment just in time process, balance, scorecard, and environment environmental management accounting. Okay, that is the most uh, popular. Okay, that come out as a tools that has been using for very uh, famous tools that has been used. Okay, and also practiced by the. Um, a management accountant in an organization. So I should go one by one because we do have uh, much time because now it's just 3.15. Okay, we have 45 minutes on this. Okay, I, I can um, proceed to... So I can proceed to the activity-based costing that one of the... Uh, become one of the famous or most popular methods of costing that um, using these uh, activities cost to assign with overhead cost because they need the accuracy of how they want to uh, look or they want to uh, implement uh, such activities and also to have uh, all those costs. So this one, um, if you have here, if you have um, to look into traditional costing okay, versus the activity-based costing, they have few uh, differences. Uh, also, they have benefit uh, among others. Okay, For example, because this traditional accounting always at an average, okay, use average overhead rates to the direct cost of manufacturing product. Okay, so here the overhead rate get applied, okay, get applied uh, on the basis of a cost driver session such as number of level hours required to make product. How can in this um, activity based cost, costing the assign of to activities and then Assign the cost to product based on the product usage of the activities which we found that it is messy how the late clicks. Right, so that's it. You know, what activity based on that known as of you and Okay. Okay, can I proceed? You have my slide anyway. No, you miss. Huh? Actually, uh, the slide presentation fell. Fell presentation, correct? You mean? Okay. Uh, okay, now you get my slide presentation. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so when we look at the traditional and activity-based costing here, okay, so companies usually want to use the tra tra traditional costing because it's uh, low cost. And uh, uh, it usually use this traditional costing for external reports because it is simpler and easier for outsiders to understand. However, it does not give managers an accurate picture, okay? does not give the manager accurate pictures um, about the figures. 
Okay, when the production volume is large and changes in overhead cost as well, do not create a substantial difference when calculating the cost of production. So these traditional methods are in expenses to complement. But here, it does not uh, give managers an accurate picture of product cost because the applications of, of overhead uh, will burden its rates and apply equally to the cost of all production. Means that they apply the same. Not uh, even the direct material labor and also the uh, overhead cost, they apply the same. Okay, so that's why it cannot uh, uh, come up with a accurate uh, calculation. Application of overhead burden rates also uh, will be the same. Overhead costs are not allocated to the product that actually consume the overhead activities. Okay, so however, in this activity based costing, they have assignment cost drivers and uh, also it's very accurate because specific overhead operations related to the manufacture of each product not all product require the support of all overhead costs as well but it is not reasonable to apply the same overhead cost to all product okay so differentiating of those um, overhead rates is very uh, important as well as the management accountants created the ABC or activity-based costing to solve the problem of inaccuracy. So it means that this ABC technique will be the most accurate um, calculation of uh, product cost, raw material, labor, and also overhead. So here, um, managers also needed a more accurate costing method to determine which profit were actually profitable and which were not. If using traditional method, they are not accurately calculate okay, this profit margin and so on. So a fundamental difference, for example, okay, um, all right, a funda uh, fundamental differences uh, between tra traditional costing and also ABC costing is that ABC methods expand the number of indirect cost pool. They have a cost pool that can be located to a specific product. Okay. However, traditional uh, costing does uh, did not uh, uh, calculate until uh, to that level. Okay. So the traditional method makes um, some kind of uh, takes one pool of a company's total overhead cost to allocate universally to all product. Okay, there are not being a specific uh, overhead cost calculation to each product for the different products. So that's why ABC is the accurate, accurately uh, calculating. Okay, so what's pro and cons to have this uh, uh, activity-based costing? Okay, as well as we know, I'm sure you also have this information where, okay, so activity-based costing, most difficult and uh, very costly to implement. That's why some SME small companies does not apply this activity-based costing uh, for that reason. Okay, so it is more suited to businesses with high overhead costs that manufacture products, right? Rather than companies that offer services. Okay, services company, um, um, I mean, not really suit, suit to the uh, activity Based costing. So companies that manufacture large number of different products prefer an activity-based system because it gives more accurate cost of each product. And with activity-based allocation of that overhead cost, it's easier to identify areas where expenses are being wasted on unprofitable products. So that's why they want to reduce the wastage that uh, has been um consider to uh the unprofitable products okay so this can minimize okay the uh losses okay or uh a small profit margin okay so when they use activity based costing the companies can increase or make a large profit margin to the suitable or reasonable product that they have to produce okay so whether how to decide, deciding between traditional or activity-based costing is not that easy, all right? So 
manager's choice should depend on the purpose of the reporting. Okay, and who will see the information as well. Managers also need accurate product costs and prefer to use activity-based costing system, even though this system is more costly because it provides better information that will help the managers to make more uh, profitable decisions in the long run or in the long term. Okay, so for external reporting, for example, Companies that uh, still use the traditional costing system, but it is becoming obsolete as outsiders demand that need more accurate information about the businesses. There is pro and cons that I can share with you. Uh, comparison between traditional method and activity-based costing that uh, always okay, consider as management accounting tools. Okay. Uh, for those managers involved. Okay, so next we do have, uh, we do have total quality management. Okay, the second tools. Okay, about the total quality management. Okay, sometimes it sounds like total quality management in um, principle of management, but here, okay, it should be. Uh, defined as um, movement okay also this quite the same but it's include or uh, in management accounting we more focus on the processes okay so here uh, movement towards improved quality and customer satisfaction okay known as tqm is a management philosophy Okay, that includes involved in, uh, for example, leadership, employees' participation, empowerment, teamwork, customer satisfaction, and continuous Im improvement that most of these elements are embedded in management accounting perspective. Okay, here, um, here defining the, uh, first, the quality concept in total quality management. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> okay. So it is both, um, I mean, quality and total quality management uh, approach considers that the quality a function of a specific, okay, measurable variable differences, okay. So in quality reflecting the differences between, uh, in quality of sum between the all the activities, okay, all the activities that uh, contribute or quality of some attributes of the product, for example. Okay, so this quality starting from the, for example, client satisfactions, all right? Therefore, this quality can be understand that uh, as a fitness for intended use. Okay, fitness of intended use, then how well the product performs. Okay, it's intended function. Okay, so kind this kind of approach in TQM uh, uh, always very, uh, good to the manager point of view, which is underlying the customer uh, important. Okay, they underlie the customer's importance and also basing its analysis, uh, the strategy that improving the offered value to the client that found that we realized a comparison between the old and the new approach regarding uh, the TQM strategy. So here, they have uh, provided um, several benefits of uh, TQM here uh, because in if we compare the TQM or understand the TQM in all approach, okay, that quality referring to the achievement of the technical objective of the product inspection, the compensation between quality, cost, and the delivery time, okay? So, whereas... In new approach, they have understanding of component, part of the offered value to the client, to the customer. Okay, we search for synergy between the quality, cost on delivery time. Okay, between the quality, um, between the synergy, between quality, cost and delivery time. So here, the indicators previously provided by the old approach referring to the only productivity, cost, and profit. While in new approach of TQM, they have uh, indicators related to 
include value to the client as well. Okay, value to the client. That's why benefits of TQM include, okay, not only higher for higher profitability achievement, it's improved the employee's moral, it's removal of defect and waste or any waste, okay, that uh, has been include, has been faced by uh, the organization or companies to improve customer focus and satisfaction. That is why it creates the indicators related, okay, the value for the client as well, okay, that represent to improve customer focus and satisfaction, okay, and also to have that enhanced shareholders and uh, stakeholders value, okay, as well as uh, the uh, stakeholders also to improve innovative processes. This is very um, highlighted one, highlighted key point where the organization has to improve and in innovative way. Okay, not just in a product, okay, in a processes or procedure that they has been adapted. Okay, so they can improvise uh, them, the innovative and creative, creative way of processes in the next future years, maybe. Okay. Right. Okay. So to reduce cost, of course, and better cost management. Okay. Better cost uh, management. Okay. Here um, uh, to increase the customer loyalty and attention. Okay. That is one of the key points to relate to the value. Okay. To give value to the uh, client. Of to the customer. Okay, flexibility to change market conditions, strengthen the competitive position, okay, and uh, higher to have a higher productivity by deciding uh, the new technological machineries, for example, and to have the higher profitability as well. Okay, some of the authors that uh, proposes uh, even TQM principle to focus on the firm value that can offer to its customers. So here the people, okay, represent the main source inside the company. The teamwork also increases the activities of efficiencies that should be included in these TQM tools that has been set up by each organization. Okay, so here, if you look into TQM uh, basis in manage management accounting, okay, uh, not only uh, to to let the to to uh, to to be accountable to the client, but to have uh, the results of the processes that first to be measured. Okay, processes and procedures. Okay, in terms of uh, deciding which companies to buy the direct materials. Okay, to choose the labels. Okay, and so on. So the way of development of the processes and procedures are the first to be improved and the first to be changed from year to year. Okay, to align in order to align with the objective of the organization as general. Right? Okay. So that is uh, TQM. And uh, next uh, for just in time. Okay, for just in time here, right? What we have to consider in just in time. Okay, so here if we look into the management accounting perspective, materials, components, and raw materials that has been involved because this just in time include work in process, not only the product, okay, so an inventory, okay, refer to the just in time, uh, which goods are received from suppliers only as they are needed. So main objective of this method is to reduce the inventory or work in process holding costs and inventory to increase inventory turnover. So what's important in just in time here, it requires carefully planning. Yeah, refer back to the first element of manager accounting perspective, right? So just in time requires uh, carefully planning the entire of 
supply chain and usage of superior. Okay, inventory, for example, software, okay, include software in order to carry out for the entire process until the delivery process. Because when we look into the processes, of course, we have to increase the efficiency and to eliminate or decrease the error uh, uh, in the middle of process uh, and should be monitored clearly or monitored as well. Okay, so the important effects of a just-in-time okay, inventory management system, for example, a just-in-time strategy eliminates Okay, to reduce the overproduction because when overproduction, when product is fragile, okay, it will the company will lose some money. Okay, so this strategy is to eliminate overproduction, which happens when the supply of product or item in the market exceeds the demand and leads to an uh, accumulation or leads to the um accumulated of unsellable product okay we cannot sell in a reasonable time okay the company cannot sell the product in a reasonable time that's why just in time exists because to uh, eliminate either overproduction or over inventory hold okay so here this unsellable product for example it tends to be inventory that stop okay then which increases waste Okay, it contributes to the wastage and consume inventory space as well. Because if the company holding much inventories, okay, they need to rent another factory, another warehouse, for example, it will cost the companies more. So that is why in that case, they have to have this just-in-time um, inventory management or product, referring to the product management because in just in time system only when customer order what you need then there is no risk of accumulating or to have that unusable inventory okay beside that it also can decrease okay can control the cost of um where uh, rental of warehouse right so because as we know the warehouse rental is very expensive and excess inventory can double your holding cost also can double up the cost uh, by the company okay so in just in time the warehouse holding costs are kept to the minimum rate a uh, minimum one and um, because if the customer order only when uh, customer places an order okay so this item is already sold before it reach uh, the customer and they have no need to store um, any items or product for a longer time in inventory okay so here production line also you have to uh, to have um, quite efficient procedures okay uh, for production line uh, and uh, in terms of uh, customer okay inventory managers to contact the suppliers and suppliers um, comes into the raw materials and it process until becoming uh, finished good or finished product and the delivery product to the customer. Okay, so in terms of how this just in time, if we think uh, and we link back to the controlling. Okay, so how this just in time can control. Okay, so if we understand of the IT model, okay, so the manufacturer has complete control over the manufacturing process actually, and which works on demand pool basis, where they can respond to customers' need by quickly increasing the production for an in-demand product, and also it can reduce the production for slow moving items. That, that is why just in time is very important in uh, to become as a tool in uh, management accounting. And this makes the JIT model actually more flexible and able to cater to ever changing market needs. For example, this product only lasts the popularity for three months. So 
for next three months, they have to plan the other product as well. So just in time makes possible uh, for the manufacturer or owner of the business to control over this and plan uh, here and there uh, to reduce or to make their product, uh, to reduce their cost and also to make their product more marketable from time to time. For example, if you look into Toyota that doesn't purchase raw materials until an order is re received. Okay, Toyota car brand. So this has allowed the company to keep minimal inventory at very minimum amount, um, thereby reducing its cost and enabling it to quickly adapt to changes in demand without having to worry the existing inventory that they have. So just in time tools is much uh, important Okay, uh, tools that need to uh, use by product maker, okay, for the manufacturer. Right, so I have another tool. I think I complete in 10 minutes and uh, to have from your uh, part. Okay, so, uh, okay, let uh looks at the contemporary issues in managerial accounting to be included is balance scorecard, okay? So this balance scorecard actually is a strategic planning and management system that is used widely in an organizations and also include to the non-profit organization, okay, NGO. And because they want to align, okay, their business, their business activities with the vision and strategy of the organization. And also it can improve internal and external communications and they can monitor the organization and performance against strategic goals. So here, they have also four key components of balance scorecard. Okay, for example, financial, customer, internal business process, and learning goals. If you look at here, this balance scorecard, okay, to be include the uh, finance part. Okay, okay, so... Uh, processes, learning of growth and also customer. Okay, in a customer part, okay, how do the customer see the business from the customer perspective? So, the company have to have this information. Okay, by having the reviews, okay, from the customer, what must the company excel it? Okay, excel at, okay, whether the product, whether the customer service and so on so forth. Okay, in internal perspective, maybe they can have it. And can the company continue to improve and create value of innovation, processes, and learning perspective? How do the company look to the shareholders, for example, in the financial part, okay, in the financial perspective, right? Because if the company have a good financial standing, so of course, the stake, uh, the shareholders will invest more. Okay, we contribute more in this part. So, in that case, when giving the, for example, senior managers information from four, from these four different perspectives, okay, the balance scorecard actually can minimizing the information overloaded by limiting the number of measures that they has been uh, used for now. So now companies rarely suffer from having too few measurements. And commonly they keep adding new measures wherever an employees or for example, consultant makes a worldwide suggestion. So here several companies also have already adopted the balance scorecard. Their early experiences using the scorecard have demonstrated that uh, also meets several managerial needs, okay? So it can bring by doing this, okay, in a single management report, okay, it depends on their creative and uh, effective way of doing, okay, to have a company's competitive agenda, for example, becoming customer oriented, okay, and example also maybe they want to shorten their response time, respond to the customer needs and um, question, improving also include to improve the quality emphasizing teamwork okay to reduce the new product launch times for example for example iphone and so on and managing for the long-term one so other than that this balance scorecard can guard against sub optimization 
So how? Okay, by forcing, okay, for example, the senior managers to consider all the important operational measure together. Okay, so that the balance scorecard lets them see whether this uh, improvement, okay, uh, such and in one area that have been achieved at the expense of another. Okay, they have they, they have to have have um a decisional uh, decision making as well, and even the best objective that they rely on can be achieved badly if they set up okay this balance scorecard um in inefficiently. Okay, so also if we look into the companies that can reduce time to market, for example, in two uh, very different ways uh, in terms of uh, improving in uh, the management of new product, for example, introductions or by releasing only product that are incrementally different from the existing product. Where we can relate is to the innovative way of creating this uh, uh, product in controlling the market one, and it can be also in terms of uh, spending on setup can be cut either by reducing setup times. Because in ABC, if we look at, at the uh, perspective on ABC, activity-based costing, the setup times also become one activities that they have to concern. Okay, by increasing batches, sizes, for example, and production output, okay, and so forth. Okay, so here uh, to illustrate how com companies okay that create their own balance scorecard with the experiences of one uh, semiconductor companies okay like electronic electronic circuits okay so to uh, they they have they are clarify to clarify and simplify the critical indicators of current and future performance as well. Okay, the last one okay is about the environmental management accounting. So this environmental management accounting actually is the generation and analysis of both financial and non-financial information to support, okay? To support the uh, internal environmental management processes and procedures and this complementary to the conventional financial appropriate mechanism that also can help the, in terms of uh, identification and the location of environment related. If you look at this, okay, they have um, uh, environmental management accounting features, okay, that are very important, okay, that very important to uh, look around, for example, in terms of waste disposal and emission treatment costs. Okay, production costs of non-product output, waste material purchase value of non-product output and prevention and environmental uh, management, right? So here in this term, in environmental issues, uh, actually attracting increasing attention for example, in uh, many countries, okay, with uh, a tremendous increase in waste generation, okay, so it's getting expensive, as expensive for now, okay. In recent years, they have become so expensive in accumulating this um, uh, waste management, okay. So, for example, um. If we look in terms of environmental issues like okay, deforestation, less of uh, bio loss of biodiversity, okay, loss of biodiversity, loss of mangrove habitats, for example, as well as uh, national and transboundary smoke has. Okay, so here uh, they are uh, attracting this uh, increasing and attention in many countries. Okay. Okay, so when we look into these particular terms, okay, more and more incentive and rebates are being provided actually to encourage the manufacturing companies in more concentration on environmental engagement, such as green tax incentive, duty exemptions for hybrid cars, okay, pioneer status tax incentive, and um, 
also waste recycling facilities. Okay, so that is involving much an expensive cost that the government or um, a look on, and this uh, time around, um, they have still not convinced about the benefits of reporting environmental related issue also, because it involves a high cost and no immediate return. Okay, that is why this environmental management accounting has been introduced uh, actually to, to reduce, okay, to reduce or to uh, concern about the environmental waste involved in especially manufacturing industries. Okay, uh, because um, when we look into the physical metrics of material and energy consumption, for example, the disposal cost and so on, Okay, we have also ma uh, monetized metrics along with the environmental manage account management accounting and revenue driven from sales of waste. Okay, so all in all, okay, I have been uh, general um share the general information, okay, about the management accounting, uh, in terms of uh introduction and brief of manager management accounting. So uh, with that, I end my session. Okay, I give back to uh, Novita for uh, Q&A. So thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much for Dr. Suraya. For our participant, if you have any question for the speaker, please add them to the chat or you can raise your hand. Okay, for still waiting for another question, we will read the question from participant in the Zoom and also YouTube. Uh, first question from Mr. Amin Tohari. Uh, how do you pass an accounting interview? And what are the principles of accounting? That's all and thank you so much. Okay, this question from Mr. Amin Tohari. Okay, actually principle of accounting more to financial reporting where uh, the business transaction record every day okay for example to buy the sessionary to pay the uh, wages uh, salaries uh, salaries for employees and also workers uh, to pay the utilities bills okay and to present finally for end of year a statement of uh, uh, a statement of comprehensive income and also statement of financial position to be as a reporting ways of doing um, uh, financial reporting for the organization as well. So it different with management accounting, where the manage, uh, management accounting, they have no financial uh, report, but they have internal reports uh, such as, okay, budgeted uh, planning, sales planning, sales budget, okay, labor budget and labor planning and so on. Okay, it uh very different. Okay, uh perspective compared to both of them, principal accounting and also, uh, management accounting. So, thank you. Okay, thank you for answering. And then the second question. Okay. How can the implementation of the latest technology, such as artificial intelligence or big data analysis, increase efficiency in an organization accounting management process? This question from Mr. Sukamto from participant in YouTube. Okay, Mr. Sukato, yes. Of course, this technology actually support okay, the management accounting an internal way okay of doing for example to help the the managers to help the CEO to help the lower level managers to the efficiency ways of doing okay efficiency way of doing uh, any procedure okay for example to have a, a very uh, sophisticated machinery okay in order okay in order to increase their uh, output or production and to make more sales okay so this AI and also other technologies can support the management accounting especially in tools and technique implementation 
Okay, so far, however, they have very um, um, limited use of the, uh, the small or SME, small medium enterprise companies because of its uh, cost. Okay, the cost of to have sometimes to have adapted AI and also other technologies much uh, uh, different and much costly, okay, compared to the traditional method one. Uh, that is only the limitation that I can see, okay, but AI and technology is very supportive, it's very uh, in need in management accounting, especially in manufacturing industries. Right, so that 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 my answer. Thank you. Okay, thank you for answering. And then we still have two question again. And then how? And then the next question: How can management accounting adapt to changing economy condition? And how can decision making be optimized in situation of economy uncertainty? This question from Miss Berti. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Betty. Is it uh the economic condition or what? Uh, the, um, economic contribute to the economic condition, is it? Yeah, economic condition. Okay. So actually, okay, if you can see that uh if you can actually understand a bit what I have been sharing just now, uh for example, in tools and also techniques of uh, management accounting provided or suggested uh, a, a management accountant to be used can help actually reducing the economic um, or to be in a, a very uh, uh, when 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 the countries or when the uh, companies having uh, trouble in terms of they are having losses or decrease in profit okay all those tools, for example, balance scorecard can increase the efficiency of performance of the workers, for example, and also procedures that they use. And for CVP analysis, okay, you can connect that uh, the break even point in general that they get actually um uh, uh, actually can be as uh, targeted, okay, targeted one to the break even. So at least they can control. Okay, not to be loose uh, and cover at least the expenses. So that's why this um, supported tool, such as also activity-based costing, where they have accuracy in calculating all over the cost, okay, with the different product, okay, to have that drivers along can decrease the profit and minimize, okay, their economic unstable. Okay, so... Inside that, we have to consider okay the tools and technique provided by management accounting, okay, to have a very uh, economic wiser decision and can improve the profit as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for answering. And then the last question: How can the implementation of of activity based costing enhance the accuracy of mm -hmm. cost allocation in manufacturing company and what specific challenges make make organization face when adopting this approach in their management accounting practice? This question from Mr. Dio Prayogo. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bebrek. Okay, so as we know that uh, tra tra traditional costing versus activity-based costing, they have a pro and cons, right? They have pro and cons. So it uh, from the benefit side, I can say that activity-based costing can reduce the cost, okay, can reduce the expenses of um, having a cost driver, okay, efficient uh, calculating of overhead, Okay, activity based location of overheads because it's easy to identify okay, the areas where expenses are being waste or we can call uh, it unprofitable product. So, if you uh, understand from the point of view the differences from tra traditional costing and activity based costing, uh, activity based costing focus on accuracy. 
of calculation of their prime costs such as direct material and labor and also overhead costs. Because why? Because they uh, calculate those prime costs plus overhead costs to each product, not as a total assumption like total uh, like uh, traditional activity based costing. So that is the way or that is how the activity based costing has been introduced and implemented in various manufacturing industries. Okay, thank you for answering. I think it's very clear answer from Professor. Okay, before I close this event for all for all participants, please open your camera. I will take a picture on the count of three. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, another one. One, two, three. Smile. Thank you. Thank you for your keen cooperation. Finally, we come to the end of visiting lecture today. We would like to thank you for Dr. Suraya Ibrahim for the wonderful information and sharing your knowledge. We hope this information will be beneficial for all participants. At least we hope to have more collaboration in the future. The visiting lecture for today and here. We hope to see you soon. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank you so much for Dr. Suraya. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Bye. Bye. Have a good day, yeah. everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.